Welcome, viewers, to our program. Uh, I am Barbara Canalopoulos, and I'm hosting a panel discussion in celebration of, of community, community Media Day. We're here especially to celebrate our own Falmouth community television. And let me start out by introducing our panelists. We have here on, the, on my right, on your, perhaps it's your left, John Mortensen, who is a television, a Falmouth community television volunteer. And to my left is Jerry Luss, who's also a volunteer. And we have now Reverend we're an elder of a quite congregational church, and also Michael Kasparian, the president of Falmouth Chamber of Commerce. Well, um, folks, it's often said that um, the um, character of a person is best revealed in hard times. I think that may be true of organizations too. I'm thinking now of Falmouth Community Television. During these hard times, the organization has shown such resilience in finding ways to keep Falmouth residents safe, to kind of support our organizations. And I think we might celebrate those kinds of uh, activities today, which is in support of, uh, of uh, community media. Maybe, maybe Reverend Nell Fields, you can speak to ways in which FCTV has been of help to you and to the church. Yes, Barbara. Uh, FCTV has always been very um, helpful uh, to us, to me, but especially during this pandemic. Uh, it just seemed the minute this hit, it was one of the first organizations to reach out to us was FCTV. In fact, I got a, a text from from Deb Rogers saying, how can we help you? No, actually the first thing she said is, how are you? How can we help you? And, uh, oh gosh, I guess a couple of weeks into this, John Mortensen uh, helped us out tremendously with, with technology, um, got our services on uh, channel 13. Uh, and in addition to that, just uh, being there I knew that I could turn on FCTV and find out what was happening in Falmouth vis-a-vis -vis COVID, um, you know, with the health reports from, from Scott McGann. Yes. Uh, and you couldn't, it was real time. When we weren't leaving our houses, you could turn on the TV and find out what was happening. Yes, I know. I would watch that to know whether or not I dared go to the grocery <laughs> store. That day. Yeah. Yeah, it's in these ways that, that we can depend upon. On, on community media, it's just, uh, it really is a, a treasure. And so I'll turn also to, uh, to Michael Kasparian. Obviously, uh, you've got the Business Roundtable as a program that you do, and heavens knows businesses have been hard hit. How has, uh, what's your view of uh, ways in which FCTV has tried to help? Well, you know, Barbara, I think, you know, to echo what Nell was saying, that FCTV is really out there and providing information, a good conduit for information from the town, uh, from businesses, from all sorts of organizations, state and um, local health agencies, and really trying to keep people who are at home, who are afraid to come up, particularly our, our elders and folks who are, who are stuck at home. I mean, it's a great opportunity for them to get the information in real time, as Nell said, but also, I think there was a very important role in FCTV continuing its regular programming to provide entertainment and in many ways relief for people who are otherwise feeling very overwhelmed by this pandemic. And they could turn to their favorite programs and um, be entertained while they were also, uh, you know, being informed. You are so right. We do need, uh, uh, there is this worry about um, pandemic fatigue. People need to keep positive. Um, in fact, um, uh, Jerry Lassos, we can speak about that because we, we um, talked earlier about the importance of staying positive through this. We can get through it, um, but we've got to, all, we have to work, work on keeping our spirits lifted. So I'll turn to Jerry for your, your, your volunteer there and your um, have been been volunteering and are interested in, in producing your own program. 
That's right, Barbara, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think the idea of staying positive is truly important. And I know that FC's TV has uh, encouraged people to create videos and send them in uh, to show how they're dealing with the pandemic. And I believe I've done two of them. And video production is very much an area of interest for me. So I've really enjoyed those. And it's encouraged me to continue in uh, video production. I hope to soon uh, be creating some programming uh, related to the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be working with their Indian education department and working with studio uh, students on uh, video production and that kind of thing. But your idea about staying positive, I think is uh, gonna be so important uh, as the winter months come along, as the holiday season comes along, uh, that combination of staying safe yet staying upbeat and positive is gonna be real key to surviving. It takes a little imagination, doesn't it? But, uh, but it, can, it can be done. And um, John, John, you're um, certainly very active and you've got the kinds of skills that are sorely needed these days. Sure, um, uh, I can speak to that, but really I think the big key for community television um, especially in this day and age of an absolute wash of media on the internet and on television and, and all that, is that the thing that's unique about FCTV and community television is that it's local, very local. It is focused very tightly on our community. Um, and, and that hyper-focus is, is what makes it unique and so valuable to the community. So uh, I, I think that uh, we really want to make sure we don't discount that and people know, hey, th this programming you're watching here pertains exactly to you. And uh, I think that's really, really important. And then as a resource, as you know, a, a producer, um, it's terrific. I mean, there are professional studios there and uh, ways of finding staff and equipment uh, that, that you can use to produce your programs for air and such. Um, and um, that's an incredible community resource. Um, not to mention the things that are their edicts, such as helping with transparency and government and, and, mm -hmm. and education and all of that. Um, you know, this is, these are things that are all really, really vital right now um, um, and have always been, but, but even more now that we're stuck at home, it really is uh, important to hear a local message. Uh, so we don't feel like we are uh, alone or isolated, or at least it helps somewhat. Yes, you're quite right. And I think that uh, Nell spoke to that when we look to see what's happening with respect to, to COVID-19. It's local. It isn't what's going on in Boston. It's news about what's happening here. So that really has been quite a lifesaver and making people feel secure and safe. Yeah, I, I, I want to pick up on that, Barbara, and uh, what everyone else was saying is that it watching FCTV during this time reminds me uh, how important this community is to me. And you, you hear and see all the crazy news out there and say, oh, thank the good Lord, I live in Falmouth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the other thing is, is that FCTV has a way of connecting us, uh, which is so important during this time because we uh, we tend to sort of buy into the myth that we're not connected, mm -hmm. but we actually are connected through FCTV. And Michael, you said something I think was right on is uh, being able to watch um, previous programs uh, that remind me, oh, things are not as crazy as they are. There is such a thing as normalcy out there. You know, watching the reruns of, of sports or the marching band that, oh, okay, we're going to get back to this one of these days. Yes, yes. Yes, I, I can quite agree with that too. And I think I can speak um, about for Jerry as well that uh, SCTV offers us an opportunity to use our creativity. I love doing my program. It, it just keeps me alert, keeps me thinking, and I get to meet so many wonderful people, community members. There are so many writers and artists and thinkers in this community, and it's a thrill to be able to 
introduce the viewers to them. And so we, uh, FCTV keeps us, keeps us occupied with, with uh, things we love to do. And Barbara, the, if I could, uh, could I mention uh, having had the opportunity to work the camera for you, I just wanted to share how much I appreciate that uh, you've always been so positive and so professional and so encouraging because we had conversations about common interests like Greek mythology and writing books. And, and it was always such a joy to walk in to the studio and know that you're there. And, and as busy as you are, you still had the time to make that kind of connection. And I think that's true for the whole staff. Uh, when I first moved here, it's been a year and a half now, but the day we went to a, uh, you know, the, the market, the farmer's market is, and I was looking to get involved in the community and there was Andrew with a, a booth talking about FCTV and how welcoming that was as a new person to the community that here is this wonderful outlet, uh, this wonderful resource, and then to get the training on high tech equipment and then combine that now to um, my role working with community members uh, with Mashby Wampanoag, I really see it as such a valuable way to have that open communication. And uh, it, it's just been a, a blessing since we moved here. Yes, and, uh, and, and speaking about that, I'm so glad that John, John mentioned high tech cutting edge equipment. This is incredible. It's um, equipment that costs so much money. Individually, we could never do that. And some of the uh, training on uh, learning how to edit this uh, just, and it continues. I think we um, will probably look forward to the end of the pandemic when people can start coming to classes. But in the meantime, we'll just be imaginative about ways in which people can use those resources by renting them, by taking them out, Yes. So, and also while we're talking about resilience, I'm sure that each of you have stories that are, um, that are encouraging about ways in which your own organizations have been resilient. I'll turn again to, uh, to Nell to talk, to tell us something about what's been going on in the church. How have people adapted and been imaginative and found ways to continue doing things? Oh, uh, gosh, the Sunday, Thursday, uh, many, eight months ago, it was a Thursday night, we decided that we were not going to have in-person uh, services, and Sunday, we were um, online, uh, Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, uh, talk about being uh, forced innovation, and we've been able to connect more deeply and more widely with people than we ever have because of this. And, and when we're able to get back together in person, we're gonna keep that online piece because it really has extended um, our reach. But the other thing that we've done, uh, people still wanna be connected. People are still looking for meaning making. So now we have services outside and uh, uh, thank the good Lord, we've had great weather. So every Sunday, we're starting to bundle up now. Uh, we've been able to have church services outside. We're still putting that on the internet and FCTV. So we have our online audience. And the other thing we've done, Barbara, is more than ever, we have reached out to the wider community. We have a, a meal program. We partnered with the Buffalo Jump. And every week we give away 30 meals to people in the Falmouth and Mashpee um, communities, in addition to meals that we give to seniors and to veterans. So we're, we're doing that as an outreach to the community, but it also gives us a sense of purpose that we're yes. still doing something to help other people out. Yes, that, that's, that's so good to hear, these uh, the being kind to each other during difficult times. Oh my gosh, makes all the uh, one little act of kindness makes yes. all the difference in the world. Yes, yes, that is that will warm our hearts as we look into the uh, cold winter. And you know, stories like that are so inspiring for the rest of us. They're worth sharing so that we, uh, that kindness can be contagious. 
And I'm sure that Michael, the chamber, um, whoa, talk about innovation. You've had to find ways to keep going and to um, keep the engines of the, of the chamber uh, working. Tell us about some of the challenges you've had. You know, I love your kindness. It is contagious uh, saying there. I think that's great. Uh, it has been challenging, you know, very challenging for a good, a good number of our businesses. Um, and as we move into the winter, I think some of them are going to be challenged even further. You know, for us, what we've been doing is just, again, trying to gather, disseminate and make information available, reaching out, doing a lot of outreach, a lot of people reaching out to us and pointing people in the right direction. Um, but what has been really helpful for us is, you know, very early on, we've been collaborating, working with the other local Cape Chambers and the um, Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. Uh, as you know, Wendy Northcross, CEO of the Cape Cod Chamber, has really uh, headed up the Cape Cod Reopening Task Force. Uh, myself and Maria Oliva, who is the CEO of the Canal Region Chamber, sitting on that task force. So we get a lot of information, which is very helpful, uh, that we're able to pass along, um, not just to our members, to the entire community. Um, but it has been challenging. And in some ways, it's been really frustrating. When this all started, we really tried to work and collaborate with the Falmouth EDIC and local lenders in coming up with a type of a, a loan program for small businesses. It was just really challenging. We were not able to uh, bring that to fruition. We're still working on it. I think that, um, you know, in the beginning, it was, it was um, super challenging with the restaurants in particular, how they were going to expand their outdoor seating and, and continue to, to survive. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think that, um, you know, the majority of the businesses, I think, fared better than they thought they may have um, during the beginning of the pandemic. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. One thing that we were very fortunate for is the fact that our population essentially doubles just due to the second homeowners. And the fact that they're here spending money and supporting local yeah. businesses yeah. has been really positive. Even if we missed out a little bit on that tourism arm, you're still doubling your population from 32,000 up until 70. And um, more and more of those folks are staying here during the winter. Uh, if they're working remotely, their kids are going to school remotely. So uh, they decide to stay in their second homes. And I've heard upwards of, it could be an additional five, six, seven, even up to maybe 10,000 people at a time extra that are gonna be here during the winter, which should be very, very helpful. But yes. as, the winter, yes. Yeah, yes. as the weather gets colder, it's really trying to find ways and being creative to try to work with particularly some of the restaurants that uh, are going to really have to continue seating people at tables at the pace they are just to survive. Yes, yes. So it's, it's still very frustrating and very, um, challenging, I think. The other thing too is, you know, we're not just a member organization, we're really a community-based organization. Uh, most, I would say, if not all of the uh, of the nonprofits and other uh, organizations that are doing so much good work in, in the community are members of the chamber, and we've been working closely with them to help them with their uh, ideas with the fundraising and, and uh, you know, their outreach, because they also need to continue working the, the important work that's being done in the community. So, you know, I think back to Nell's point and what you know, Jerry and John had talked about was just people helping each other and, 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 and just being part of a community. We're so lucky here in Falmouth to be a real community. Yes, you know, and when, um, uh, when viewers are hearing this, it's, uh, it's so encouraging because I'm sure there are people who drive down a lonely street. There is uh, all of a sudden the traffic is uh, uh, quiet. Sometimes when I'm out early driving, I wonder where everyone is. But it's so good to hear this because we know that even though our own street is very quiet, activity is going on. The you know, the people at in the at what quite what quite congregational church are busy providing food for the hungry. Your group is looking at ways in which you can help business. Jerry and uh, John are looking at volunteering things and keeping busy. So it's very nice for yeah. uh, everyone, viewers, to know that life goes on. It really and you know what I'd like, like to add, just uh, what I'm extremely proud of is, because you know we hear from a lot of different communities, is the manner in which some of the organizations here have conducted themselves, uh, in particular, um, Falmouth Public Schools, I think, has done an outstanding job in their plan um, compared to some other communities um, that have really been challenged. Um, how lucky we'd have Cape Cod Healthcare and Falmouth Hospital. What an amazing job they've done. 
the scientific community, how they've really reached out, become even more involved in the community in trying to help out. And of course, you know, everybody's supporting the service center, belonging to each other, um, all the other faith, faith-based organizations that continue to do their good work. It's, it's, um, it's a, a real sense of pride, I think, being in this community and knowing that there are so many people that are trying to help those in need. Yes. If I can say, uh, I would like to uh, say how much we appreciate this opportunity, but one of the things we have in mind is to really have uh, the young people in the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe become ambassadors for that tribe and link with all these different communities and see how they can volunteer, how can they contribute, how can they pass along information about their history, their culture, but also learn about all the valuable resources that uh, Falmouth has to offer. So it might take a little bit of time, but those are some visions that we have. So we definitely would like to work with all of you. Yes, it, that's so thrilling to think that we can engage young people in that, those kinds of activities. And I know I have this sense that we have young people now who are becoming interested in town government and are becoming active. So maybe uh, we have lots of wonderful things to look forward to that uh, reasons to stay, to stay optimistic. And I'm thinking now too of uh, FCTV's, uh, really there are the work that has been done to um, start a community conversation about racial justice. I think we've covered, uh, and Nell, you can perhaps speak about this as a, um, a, a one of the member of the steering committee of No Place for Hate. Um, this conversation about uh, about uh, equity uh, and racial justice um, that has been important too, uh, and also Falmouth uh, Community Television has mm -hmm. made its own vision statement about its concern for uh, for equity and racial justice. So um, um, now perhaps you can speak about the activities of No Place for Hate. Um, yes, you know, Barbara, uh, in the midst of the pandemic, uh, there was always a, a, a reckoning that we, we had to do as a, as a country, as a nation um, on uh, racial injustice and it unfortunately during this pandemic we had uh, the George Floyd we had um, Rana Taylor and it, it it really changed our focus from uh, worrying so much about the pandemic and to realize that we had a lot of work we still have an awful lot of work to do and um, we are doing the work it, it it's it's been it's been slow but we're having uh, conversations and I and the dialogue, and I think that's where you start first, is that you that you ask those hard questions, that we listen to each other. Uh, we're listening to people's experience, um, people of color and indigenous people, and, and realizing that um, we're living in a time where there's, we're dealing with this systemic racism, and we're, we're able to get through this by having those community conversations and asking ourselves, what kind of community do we want to be? Are we truly welcoming? Are we, um, are we doing enough to attract people of color to this community with jobs and to our police force and to our schools? And uh, uh, it's so great to listen to Jerry's idea about bringing in the Wampanoag youth. Uh, really welcome that, Jerry. So I think that is, it's wonderful. And that this is the work that has to continue post-pandemic. Yes, we're yes. Just one, beginning. I'm sorry, we, go ahead, Barbara, I'm sorry. We're just, we're just been joined by, by uh, Sue, Sue and uh, Jay Zavala. Welcome to our panel discussion. We are celebrating um, Community Media Day, which is October 20th, and especially with, uh, we're celebrating the work that Salmouth Community Television has done in supporting our community through these uh, hard times. We're talking about the work that, that FCTV has been doing um, in resiliency that has shown in reaching out to help communities or uh, residents and organizers, but we forget that um, FCTV 
began many, many years ago, bringing, uh, bringing transparency to government affairs. So I'll turn now to Sue and to Jay. Um, Sue has been a longtime volunteer at um, SCTV, and I, you how you are also uh, have a program of uh, that uh, about uh, from the chamber that you uh, have you been doing that via Zoom with uh, Michael. Michael, is it uh, uh, still continuing? We have, yeah. In fact, the Zoom thing was terrific because initially when everything went into lockdown, you know, we didn't have the Zoom right away. And so we kind of had to give it up. But once we got a hold of the Zoom, we we're doing it every week. Right. And and there was still a lot going on throughout the week. Everyone else adopted the Zoom also. And so um, so there was a lot going on, There's plenty to talk about. Mm. And uh, uh, Jay, I, I know that you are well known as a uh, you do our live coverage of the elections and also uh, the Christmas parade. Maybe you can give us uh, the lowdown on what's going to happen this year. Or is it too soon to know? Um, Hi, Barbara. It's good to see you, and it's good to see so many other members of the yeah. FCT family. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I think what I'm really looking forward to is neither one of the two you just mentioned, although the upcoming election is going to be very interesting. Uh, the program that I enjoyed producing was the uh, Senate Spotlight with our former state senator, Demacito. And now that Susan Moran is our new state senator, I'm looking forward to inviting her into the studio to share with us how she's geared up her, her uh, participation in the, uh, in the Senate and what are some of the challenges ahead. But as you speak to just generally, uh, what the community is all about with FCTV. I think we, one of the things that I like is the diversity that we have of the membership of FCTV. Not only do we have children programming, we have all the high school kids, we've got the, the public, the educational and the government channels. I think we have a, a large group of uh, involved volunteers. I think it's pretty, pretty dynamic. It is, it is. And uh, we are certainly um, lucky that um, some of the activities that have been going on maybe will continue. I know that uh, Nell mentioned uh, that some of what we're learning to do during this pandemic, maybe they're going to stay. They are turning out to uh, maybe, as you said, Nell, you've been able to reach more people than ever before. So. Um, I don't know whether Sue and uh, Michael will continue doing doing Zoom when all this is over, but uh, in some cases it's worked, it turned out to be a, a plus. Um, so what do you, what do you think about that? Is your, are you happy doing Zoom or have you been able to use it more effectively than having face-to-face -face meetings? Um, well, I can offer, I suppose. So, you know, for Susan and I, we were doing this week in Falmouth anyway, which was great. We could stand next to each other and, and we would film it and then send it to FCTV. So it was a continuation oh. of the program only via Zoom. And sometimes right. it's, it's kind of interesting because she's in her office and I'm in my office and we're, you know, we're, we're Zooming. But it, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same program. But we'll definitely continue pushing our programming through FCTV like we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, it's, it's the best way to really reach people and, and, and take hold. Um, but we're fortunate that Zoom was able to come along and kind of save save the day, if you will, to, to, yeah. to yeah. continue the program. Like, like we were mentioning earlier, you know, not only is FCTV provided all this information that's so important for people to get, but to continue with the programming that people need to be entertained and get their mind off this, you know. I mean, yeah. because you could go 24 hours, seven, look, talking and thinking strictly about politics and pandemic. And the next thing you know, you know, that's pretty depressing. So uh, breaking it up with this other type of program, I think is, is a lot of fun and, and helps. Yes, yes. So um, one of that, yeah, you're right. A, a little entertainment these days uh, goes a long way. So uh, let, I'm gonna turn to Jerry who uh, tell us about your idea of uh, having a program in which you will celebrate your heritage. 
Uh, and what, what sort of plans have you got for that? Oh, there's quite a few. Uh, one of which is digital storytelling. I think it's very important that we encourage our students to, our young people to um, interview their elders, interview grandmother, inter interview their aunts and uncles and parents, and to find out as much as they can about their history. We, we intend to provide some training for them so that they become very effective interviewers uh, in that idea of equity I'm very interested in working with you, Nell. I know we've tried a couple of times, but we'll find that common time. Here's something, and I don't know if it'll show very well, but this is, I, I hope it reads correct, but it's the Massachusetts Chronicles. This is the curriculum created by the Plymouth 400 uh, organization. This has been uh, delivered to every school in the state. And in here is the opportunity for native perspectives to be part of the curriculum on a regular basis. Included in here are scan codes where students can submit videos to tell more about their particular tribe, their particular history, their particular language. So we very much see uh, our students becoming uh, involved with video production and adding to the curriculum. And I think gaining that sense of pride in who they are and sharing with, with everyone who they are. We have some ideas for uh, absolutely working uh, in, in the field of tourism as well. How can we share uh, information about uh, names of rivers and, and counties and uh, cities and oh, all that's, that? That's so exciting. Uh, we're, real, we're very excited. Uh, yeah. the, the, the pandemic has slowed things down, but we're going to be gearing up here soon. And uh, again, I think you will be seeing uh, many of our kids in the role of ambassadors. And that will include uh, Falmouth High School, uh, all, all the elementaries in Falmouth, uh, along with other school districts as well. So we're going to be uh, networking and reaching out to uh, a lot of the community in the hopes of uh, partnering with them. And hopefully, you know, encourage some internships and uh, uh, having students thinking of themselves in the roles of town government, as you said. Uh, also, uh, colleges, reaching out to local colleges, uh, the uh, science community in Woods Hole, getting guest speakers, uh, also offering visits there so that students can become to uh, see themselves as scientists, engineers. Uh, my own daughter is a biomedical mechanical engineer, and uh, it's opened up a whole new world for us, as I think it will for many of our families, if they just see what's out there and the potential in those STEM fields. Yeah. You know, Jerry, one other group that you should probably look up that'd be very helpful to you in that regard is the Falmouth Rotary Club. Okay. They work with the local youth. And um, that would be a good group for you to get in touch with. I'm sure they'd be very supportive of your mission. I appreciate that. Thank you. I think, Gary, I, think I, I, uh, oh. right now. I just, I, you use the word stories. And uh, I think that's one thing that I have learned during these past eight months is, is this hunger for connection, this hunger to know each other and, and to share our stories. Um, and I've really come to appreciate how powerful stories are and just the need for those stories to be told and, and, and listened to. So I, I thank you for your work. Oh, I can assure you, we just completed a uh, digital story cl uh, telling class with the uh, University of uh, Massachusetts, Boston. It was so powerful. You're right about telling stories and sharing stories but uh, my particular story really caused me to reflect on um, my youth growing up, my family relationships. It, it was difficult at times, but the final product and the process was very much worth everything we went through. I, I'm wondering now if um, these, um, the social unrest that we're experiencing has not been a kind of catalyst that's uh, that's uncovering the need for us to, to look at our history really 
look at it, uh, take a hard look at it, and and causing us to really think about how how uh, how important it is to to tell these stories. I, I'm I'm thinking that maybe um, this um, will continue, and as we find ways to create understanding, there will be much more of this kind of activity. I certainly hope so. I think you're right, Barbara. And I think what we'll find is how much more we are alike than we are different. I know in our conversations with you, we talked about different characters from Greek mythology or different stories you shared with me. And it reminded me of uh, stories and characters within our own culture. And I think that's true uh, with all cultures. We have, uh, I believe in the idea of one race, many cultures, and that once we dis have those open discussions, we really find we're more alike than we are different. Yes, I, I agree. And we are now joined, uh, Marie Blackburn has joined us. Marie, uh, Marie has her uh, an FCTV program called Driven Women. And um, hello, Marie, it's good to have you with us. Hi, how are you? How's everybody? Everyone, I hope everyone is well. And we, um, the, we have been talking about um, the role that, that SCTV has in, uh, in trying to reach out to the community and being of help to everyone. And I'm sure you have, uh, you have um, your program that you do and uh, how important that's been. Yeah. Do you? Uh, okay. So how is the program? Is it continuing now? Are you doing it via Zoom? Uh, I'm, I'm Sorry not... about that. Here I am. Yeah, so um, I think I would categorize it as on hiatus right now. Um, and we, you know, will resume. I continue to speak. Um, Two women, um, Driven Women is a show that, um, you know, promotes women and in, in what they're doing in the community, um, their business initiatives, um, et cetera. Um, but right now we are on a little hiatus and I'm doing um, something online called Conversations That Matter um, that deals with the areas of race and um, diversity and inclusion and social justice. And that show is shared um, to um, community television stations around the state. Very, very, very good. That's very good. I'm going to turn to Jay because I think our talk about uh, stories and uh, heritage uh, rem strikes me that this is something that resonates with you as well. Oh, absolutely, Barbara. Uh, you know, when I look back as a youth growing up in Colorado, and the diversity that existed in the 50s and 60s of my youth, uh, a number of, of uh, notions come to mind. But I think, right, you know, we're living in Falmouth, Massachusetts. And <clears throat> I know the newspaper every Friday uh, has a section talking about the past, 25 years ago, 75 years ago. And it points to different little anecdotal stories of what occurred at that particular time. And, and, uh, and I find that in the 20 years that I've lived here, I've learned more about this, the, the evolution of the town through the books that I've read, the, the books about Falmouth and these little articles. And every once in a while, I think I'd, let, I'd like to go back and interview that person and find out what was happening and you know, what brought them here and how did they get, become a part of the community, uh, that type of thing. Mm. Yes, and uh, um, Sue also, you, you certainly have been uh, a volunteer. Well, you've been behind the cameras many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. Has, uh, and you've, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, going back to the, the kind of resource that FCTV is, that the tremendous amount of uh, equipment that one learns to handle, I think you have become quite skilled behind the camera. Uh, yes, uh, SGTV did a great job teaching me how to 
how to deal with the equipment and how to uh, shoot video. I had never been behind a camera before, even a, a little camcorder before I went to FCTV 17 years ago. We, we really? did a piece with Andrew and we didn't realize it had been so long, but we joined 17 years ago. And, uh, and all of the equipment. Now I have not, I have been out of the um, building for a while. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that I need to refresh to go back into the control room and things like that. But I do film over at the town meeting and everything. So, so I've yeah, kept my hand. You are, to, you film time town meeting, well, good for you. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, that's really wonderful. I'm, uh, I'm wondering whether or not we will gather this November for November town meeting. I haven't heard anything yet, uh, whether it will be in person or via Zoom. These, these are, we talked earlier about how uh, with COVID-19 has made us all very innovative, but uh, sometimes there are limits to what we can do. So I, I will then turn to um, to um, John to see if you want to tell us something about your background. I know that that um, that Salmoth is uh, is um, your your new home. Yeah, well, I'm I'm a I'm a professional producer. It's what I do for a living, uh, video producer. But um, uh, but one thing I wanted to really uh, sort of make sure that we maintain. I mean. We've heard a lot of great stories and a lot of great ideas and a lot of great um, information, uh, everything from business to religion to education. Um, and, and I think the real key to what FCT TV provides is it provides a portal. It provides a portal to gather all of that electronic clips and information and send it out in a cohesive way. And it can really be a gathering point for the community. And now that, that, that so much is done electronically, um, I think everybody can agree that, you know, newspapers uh, are, 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 are less relevant now than they have been. Um, I think still important in, in, in communities like Falmouth, but, um, you know, things like FCTV and community television can be vital to be that collection point for all of our ideas and all of our creativity. Um, and information. And um, I think also in, in, in nowadays when people are looking for things to do, um, you know, uh, FCTV TV does a great job of training people on their own equipment, on their own cameras, and their own uh, phones and things like that that can produce programming and produce content uh, for this portal. So, um, you know, I, I think people should really think of it that way. Yes, uh, yes, I could, uh, certainly uh, can hardly wait to um, take advantage of some of the the wonderful courses they have and to learn how to use some of that equipment. We just joined by uh, with uh, Marilyn Rowland has just joined us, and certainly, certainly, you're one who can speak to the kinds of training that's off that FCTV offers. It's been uh, you are. Um, probably have moved from one, one, uh, one technology to another as they change, you probably have had to relearn. Tell us something about the kinds of skills that you've learned over the years as a volunteer. Oh, I think you're muted. I, I, I think okay. you have to- Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so I started at FCTV when my kids were eight and 10 years old, and they're in their early 30s now. And we did a children's show called Cape Cod Kids, and we did it on VHS tapes. Oh. And to edit the VHS tapes, you have to put the tapes in, you know, in one, whatever they were called, <laughs> and then take the part that you wanted to use and then skip to another. And it was horrible. And I remember one particular show it was a Christmas show <clears throat> I was taping and retaping and finally you know we just lost it was all white because we just lost resolution at each oh turn. dear so um but it was fun it was fun doing the kids show and we uh you know as my kids grew I started doing school shows mm -hmm. uh 
and um, and then music shows. So, and your show. So um, yes, it's, yes, it's Marilyn Rowland directs my show and does does all the zooming that I um, I should learn how to do as well. So um, continue. I'm, I interrupted you. Oh, yes, I, I did want to talk about something. <clears throat> So, yeah, so like everybody else, we learned to do Zoom and we do Barbara's show on Zoom now and um, and I edit it and put in little things and you can uh, you can do a lot with it. And it's so much easier now that everything is digital and you can share it immediately and it's, it's wonderful. And I, I really appreciate all the training that FCTV has provided yes. and all the equipment that is available. It's, it's an amazing community resource. So we started using that. I'm also on the board of um, Arts Falmouth. <clears throat> and as you may know, all our events were canceled this year. We do um, the mm -hmm. Woodsville Trad Stroll in, in May. We do the Arts Live in, um, in June. And we do the Jazz Fest in October. So this year in October, we filmed seven bands. And they played all at the... Um, Vagabond View of Photography, where we have had some events in the past, and we, um, Alan Russell and I videotaped all the musicians, and, and he edited them down, and we, and they're now all available on FCTV for our fabulous virtual jazz fest, so take a look for that. It's also on our website on uh, Arts Falmouth, so that's been mainly what I do, I do a lot of musical shows. I do uh, interview shows, I do talks. Uh, I'm never on camera like tonight, so this yeah. is fun. <laughs> oh, Marilyn, you, you know, uh, Michael Kasparian earlier was talking about, about this. The work that you do is so important because people are hungry for entertainment. They want to have some fun. Remember Michael talking about this, that with, uh, with the dreariness of the of being isolated, it just uh, so that's that aspect of FCTV that is so great, just right. pure fun, music, and and that sort of thing. Right. So you know another thing too, we can talk about with Marilyn talking about her uh, her events and stuff, and it's it's cool that Susan's on on the line at the same time too, because kind of kind of like the cat's out of the bag. We we are doing a virtual christmas parade um oh. we couldn't do we couldn't do it without fctv so the select wow. board very overwhelmingly supported our plan which is to stage the parade ahead of time it's gonna be it's gonna be staged in november um spectators aren't going to be allowed we have to stick with the covid rules but we're going to have walking groups and small floats and everything and, and fctv is going to um um going to film it we're gonna have jay come down do a voiceover on it um um, Incredible. Dale appeared from Falmouth High School and the orchestra are putting a musical backdrop to it. And uh, we're going to premiere it at noon on December 6th when the parade would have taken off. We're, we're going to have a Christmas parade. But the, the point being that we could not do it without FCTV because it's FCTV that's going to make this yeah. happen. Um, mm -hmm. and, and back to what we were talking about earlier, it's about this whole community. It's about the select board and the town and the DPW and Chief Dunn and the Falmouth Police who are going to provide the, yeah. um, the detail to make sure people stay safe and FCTV filming. And it's going to be amazing. So thanks to FCTV, uh, Holidays by the Sea is going to happen again. This that year. is so hey, right? <laughs> That's wonderful news. Yeah. Gosh, so, that is great. So how imaginative that... Uh, that's, that's just great news. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jay and, and Michael for, and Sue. And oh, I just can't wait. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. And uh, Marie, I uh, wanted to ask you something more about your experiences uh, early on with uh, FCTV. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I, I just love the um, community spirit of it all. I love all the opportunities um, to learn, uh, to learn new technology. It's been a family thing for us. Um, my son produces my show and um, a lot of friends have been pulled in to do different aspects of, um, of running the technology or um, set design or whatever we had. So I just appreciate the experience and look forward to doing more 
in the future, um, maybe a cooking show uh, for my son. We do a oh, lot. Yes. Um, we do a lot on um, on Zoom right now. So we had to pivot our business, and we do um, a lot of virtual um, Zoom. Anything from birthday parties to showers, memorial services, um, all the events that we normally would do are taken to Zoom and also a cooking show. So we're looking for some more um, collaboration with FCTV and to maybe come down and do a cooking um, show with Chef Ralph and, um, you know, get back to, to work when we can on Driven Women TV. Yeah. Well, let, let's hope that will be soon. Now, you know, viewers who may be watching this and are um, somewhat um, uh, uh, bothered by the idea of uh, mastering uh, technology, um, this, uh, all of you here are really a testament to how easy it is to learn. Sometimes it seems formidable when you, well, it does when I think about what you went through, Marilyn, with those early early uh, tapes and that sort of thing. Uh, but the the training the training is certainly um, uh, certainly not difficult and uh, if viewers who are watching and maybe want to get involved with FCTV should give it a chance. And uh, if the training is um, slow, it isn't something you have to master overnight. but I I, I think perhaps uh, John and um, Jerry can speak about that. Um, John, what, um, tell us something about uh, some of the courses that, that any a viewer might be interested in taking. Well, I think the camera operation stuff is terrific and the editing classes, but I think nowadays, you know, again, since you know, the facilities are closed, you yeah. know, the, the, the classes about how to produce things using your iPhone or your telephone, I think are really relevant nowadays. And of, of course, of course, the, the, the quality of those devices are, 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 are very good. In fact, uh, my daughter actually works in the industry as well. And she actually works in reality television. And right now, the way that they're producing those is with cell phones. So what oh, you're seeing no, on no. television now in a professional whatever TLC network, a lot of that stuff is being shot on cell phones. Incredible. Well. Marilyn, do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure that this is something you're aware of. Yes, I don't do it myself because it seems to be there's more options with an actual camera, but I take little snippets sometimes with, a, with an iPhone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I did, and in terms of Christmas, I did want to mention that the Solstice Singers, which I film their concert every year, is doing a, a, a virtual concert too, which we're going to start filming on Thursday, okay. thanks to FCTV providing the equipment. So yeah. I just want to mention so, that. This is great. Vir uh, viewers will know that things are happening in film. In spite of uh, the pandemic, in spite of uh, everything else, things are going on. Life goes on and uh, and it's going going on, I think, in, in a very a wonderful way. Uh, kindness of their people to each other. Earlier, Nell spoke about the work that the church people have been doing to feed the hungry. And so we have, uh, we have this uh, people helping people and uh, all of us are keeping, keeping busy and keeping positive. So I think that we have, um, at this point, perhaps we should say good night to um, everyone and, and viewers, thank you for watching. Um, stay well, wear a mask, wash your hands and keep fit and stay well. And all of you who have been with me this evening, thank you very much for a wonderful, wonderful program and for making us all feel so optimistic about the future. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, thank you Barbara. Barbara. Good seeing you. Seeing you. John, Great nice meeting everyone. you. Nice yes. to see you. Yes, Goodbye. take care, everybody. Bye. 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 Good night.